Hello everyone. I am Ms. Rajeshri Bhuya and I am a veterinary student currently in the fourth professional year. I am from Lakhimpur College of Veterinary Science, Assam Agricultural University. Today I am going to talk about a disease called the canine bibesiosis. So let's start. First let us learn about what it actually is. Well, canine bibesiosis is a tick-borne disease which is caused by a protozoan parasite which resides in the RBC of the host and it belongs to the genus Bibesia and it occurs worldwide. There are many vectors responsible for transmission of this disease but we will emphasize more on Rupicifila sanguinus as because Rupicifila sanguinus is the only vector known to transmit the disease in our region. This can occur in any canine breed and at any age, but there are certain canine breeds which are more susceptible to certain species of Babesia. Now we can see that the presence of ticks becomes a tool for diagnosis of the disease provided the, there are other clinical signs of the disease. Now coming to the synonyms, the first one is pyroplasmosis, then we have tick fever and biliary fever. Coming to the epidemiology, the name Babesia is given after scientist Victor Babes who identified the organism for the first time in ruminants. And most infections are reported in the spring and during the summers. This is because of the abundance of vectors in this, these seasons. The first documented case of canine babesiosis in the United States was in 1934. Coming to the host susceptibility, dog, wolves, jackals and other canines are susceptible to this disease. Etiology. As already mentioned, it is a protozoan parasite which belongs to the genus Babesia, which comes under the order Pyroplasmida that comes under the phylum Epicomplexa. This is the reason why it is also known as pyroplasmosis. Coming to the first species of this protozoa, and it is the Babesia canis. It is a large type species. The next one is Babesia gypsoni, known as the small type, and it is the most prevalent small type species. Now, as already mentioned that there are certain breeds more susceptible to certain species. Talking about Babesia gypsoni, the breed American Pitbull Terrier is highly susceptible to this species. And one important thing to remember about Babesia gypsonine infection is that this infection is not readily treated with normal BBC sites. Babesia vogeli, it is known as the least virulent type and it is more prevalent in greyhounds. Babesia rosei is the fourth one and it is known to be the most virulent species. Now here is a picture showing the Jimsa stained blood smear of Babesia canis. Here we can see that the size of the organism is large and paired and the second picture shows two small type of organisms and this shows the Babesia gypsoni. It is again a Jimsa stained blood smear. Then coming to the mode of transmission, the most important mode of transmission is through vector. The organism transmits transovarially and transstadially to the vector. Transovarially is through the generations and transstadially is through the different stadiums of the vector. Here is a picture showing the Rupicifila sanguinus. The first one shows an unengorged vector and the second one is that of a blood fed which is fully engorged. Direct transmission of Babesia gypsoni or through blood exchange has also been reported. The blood exchange could be through transfusion of blood or through fight among different dogs which might lead to transmission of disease from the infected to a healthy individual. 
Here is a table which summarizes the last few slides. The babesia species are placed under large and small types based on their morphological size. Babesia canis comes under the large type. Babesia rosae, Babesia vogeli also come under the large type. Babesia canis is uh, mainly transmitted by dermacenter species and refacicular sanguineus. And Babesia rosae is mainly transmitted by the vector Haemophysalis leachy. Babesia vogeli by Epicephalus sanguinis again. And there is a fourth Babesia species which is not named, falling under the large category. Babesia gypsonae and Babesia conrate are two species which come under the small category. And Babesia gypsonae is also known as the Asian strain. It is mainly transmitted by Haemophysalis lignicornis and Repicephalus sanguinis. Babesia conrate has vectors which are not known yet. Coming to the life cycle of Babesia species, there are two main stages. The first one is inside the RBC of the host in which the sporozoids convert into the pyroclasms and the other is inside the tick vector. Organisms are present in the saliva of the vector and the sporozoids are released into the bloodstream of the host when they are fed upon by the vectors. The sporozoids then penetrate the RBC and they undergo binary fission and ultimately merozoids are released from the RBCs and when uninfected vectors feed upon the host, they take up these merozoids and in the vector they transform into gametes and they fuse to form the zygote and then they reach the salivary gland and undergo sporogony and release the sporozoids in the saliva and can thus continue the, continuing the cycle coming to the pathogenesis after the entry of the organism it attaches to the erythrocyte membranes and these membranes are then endocytosed there is direct erythrocyte damage and the damage can be through immune mediated destruction or maybe through different route and the destruction of red blood cells will lead to hemolytic anemia and there will be sequestration in the spleen. Due to hemolytic anemia, the spleen has an increased workload on itself. Due to the increased workload, splenomegaly results and as a result of splenomegaly, the spleen is unable to do its normal functioning and therefore it holds on to more number of thrombocytes in it making thrombocytes unavailable in the circulation and thus causing thrombocytopenia. These organisms release vasoactive amines and cytokines which produce vasodilation and vasodilation is one reason for causing hypotensive shock in the host. It also causes increase in the permeability of the endothelium and therefore which the plasma flows out of the vessels and they cause shock again. The hypotensive shock is more common in puppies and in the percute form of the disease that may occur and it may be caused by both Babesia gypsona and Babesia canis infection. Coming to the clinical findings, there are five main forms of the disease. The first one is the alimentary form, which is characterized by stomatitis, pancreatitis, gastritis, and enteritis. The second form is the respiratory form, which causes respiratory distress. The third one is the circulatory form. It causes edema. The fourth one is the ocular form, which is characterized by keratitis, iritis, etc. And the last one is the muscular form, which causes muscular weakness. Now, talking about some common clinical findings, fever, anorexia, and lethargy are common signs. And there is hemolytic anemia. The anemia is one of the most common signs in this disease. And first of all, the mucous membranes tend to be congested, which 
later on becomes pale due to anemia. Here is a picture showing a pale conjunctival mucous membrane. Then there is pigmenturia. There is icterus, which is not very common in Babesia gypsonii infection. It is mostly because Babesia gypsonii tends to cause more chronic infection. There is splenomegaly and there is abdominal pain due to splenomegaly. There is lymph adenopathy, melina and the animal might collapse. Here are five pictures. The first one shows ocular bleeding. The second one or picture B shows severe tick infestation in the pinna of the ear. Number C is showing particular hemorrhage spots on the inguinal region of the infected animal. And number D shows large circular red spots on the ventral aspects of abdomen. Number E shows ascites. In this picture, in the left one, we see icterus, that is the mucous membrane is icteric. And this animal is infected by Babesia canis. Figure 3 is that of an animal suffering from Babesia gypsona infection showing an icteric sclera. The disease is also classified into complicated form and an uncomplicated form. The complicated form is mainly due to hemolysis and there is acute renal failure. There are cerebral signs, coagulopathy, ecteras, hepatopathy, and there is immune-mediated hemolytic anemia. The immune-mediated hemolytic anemia is actually a kind of an autoimmune response in the host, which occurs mainly due to release of antibodies like the IgG antibody against the own cells of the host and therefore there is continuous hemolysis even after treatment the animal shows no progress and the anemia still continues to occur then there is acute respiratory distress hemoconcentration which is also known as red biliary and we'll come to it later on there is hypotension, cardiac involvement, and pancreatitis. Coming to the uncomplicated form, it, it can be mild, moderate, or severe. It shows acute hemolysis, fever, anorexia, depression, and pale mucous membrane. It shows splenomegaly and water hammer pulse. Now we'll go a little more deep into the complicated form. And we'll talk about red biliary. This disease is also known as the biliary fever. And there is a condition known as the red biliary. It is actually a syndrome which is mainly characterized by hemoconcentration and by intravascular hemolysis. The cause is mainly due to vasculitis and the fluid shifts which leads to relative hemoconcentration. And the prognosis here is guarded. Here is a picture showing severe enterogia in the case of babesiosis, which is caused by Babesia rosei. The second picture shows a pulmonary edema. This is again caused by Babesia rosei. As we have already discussed that Babesia rosei is the most virulent species of Babesia. It is responsible mainly for causing the complicated form of the disease. Coming to the cerebral babesiosis. The cause is mainly due to endothelial damage and there is sludging of the parasitized erythrocytes in the small vessels of the brain. The rate of progression is very rapid and the neurological signs include seizures, behavioral changes, ataxia, paresis, nystigmas, and isochoria, tetraplegia, etc. Here are two pictures. One, number A is showing a non-responsive dog, which is showing rigidity and nystigmas. And number B is showing a microscopic uh, lesion, showing brain hemorrhages. Coming to the lesions, the carcass is anemic. 
there is icterus, there is splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, etc. This is a picture showing severe icteric internal organs. Let's now take a look at the diagnosis. First, we'll go for the proper history of the animal. Then we have the clinical signs, which includes anemia, hemoglobinuria, anorexia, etc. Then we'll come to the lesions, that is hepatomegaly and splenomegaly, in case of a dead animal. Then we'll go for hematological examination, and we will check for the blood parameters. Usually the hemoglobin levels will be much lower and there will be some thrombocytopenia as well. Then we will go for microscopic examination with gene sustaining for Bibisia canis and Bibisia gypsonae and, and is one of the fastest and most commonly used tool in our region. Then we can go for PCR for confirmation and we can also go for indirect fluorescent antibody tests. Then we have ELISA coming to the differential diagnosis. This disease needs to be differentiated from diseases and uh, conditions which have similar clinical signs as that of babesiosis. This includes anaplasmosis, early cirrhosis, gyrophilaria emitis infection, hepatozone canis infection, immune mediated hemolytic anemia also known as IMHA. An easy way to differentiate babesiosis from these diseases is by going for microscopic examination of the GIMSA stained uh, blood smear. Now let us come to the treatment. Treatment for Babesia canis, Babesia rosei and Babesia vogeli infection is similar and we can use diaminogen acetate at the rate of 3.5 mg per kg body weight either subcutaneously or intramuscularly. We can also use imidocarb dipropionate instead of diaminosin acetate. The dose rate for imidocarb dipropionate is 7.5 mg per kg body weight once or 6.6 .6 mg per kg body weight given 14 days apart, either subcutaneously or intramuscularly. The problem with Administration of imidocarb dipropionate is that it inflicts pain at the site of injection and therefore we administer atropine sulfate prior to administering imidocarb and diaminazine can cause the central nervous system toxicity so we have to be very careful while using these drugs. Coming to treatment of Babesia gypsonae, the choice of combination is by using etovacan at the rate of 13.3 mg per kg body weight given three times daily for 10 days along with azithromycin at the dose rate of 10 mg per kg body weight once daily orally for 10 days and there is another combination which we commonly use and that is the combination of three drugs namely clindamycin, metronidazole and doxycycline clindamycin at uh, 25 mg per kg body weight, metronidazole at the dose rate of 15 mg per kg orally twice daily and doxycycline at the rate of 5 mg per kg body weight orally twice daily again and we can continue this treatment for about 7 to 10 days or we can extend the period up to 14 days based on the severity. Okay now talking about the drawbacks of etovacan. Atovacan has been known to cause relapses and it causes resistance. It also has some gastrointestinal side effects. And the expense of atovacan makes it undesirable for pet owners. Coming to the supportive treatment. The supportive treatment is a crucial part in the treatment. We can go for analgesics and antipyretics to treat the abdominal pain and the pyrexia respectively. We can then go for fluid therapy to compensate for the dehydration cost. We can go for probiotics like amicolon because the treatment is prolonged and tends to cause a disbalance of the essential flora. 
we can go for vitamin B and liver extract supplementation for resolving the anemia and in case the animal does not take up vitamin B and the liver extracts very well we can go for oral supplementation or by iron we can go for whole blood transfusion from a healthy donor coming to the prevention and control which also happens to be the last part of this discussion we can go for some preventive methods like controlling the vector we can use deeps or sprays at some periodic intervals so that the animal is free from vectors the prophylaxis is not available in our area the vaccine known as pyridoc is available in europe blood transfusion has significant risk to recipient animals because transfusion of blood from infected donors might cause an healthy animal to get infected as well we have reached the end part and at the end i would like to mention the references from where i have taken all the informations and at the end i'd like to thank you all for your patient hearing